Moving on now to our weekly eco car spot. So far in the series we've looked at super efficient diesels and hybrids, but this week we're on to our first 100% electric vehicle test. That's right, a car that you simply plug into a normal household power socket. Nissan claims that the LEAF is the world's first mass-produced electric car. So what's it like? Well, at first glance, it's fast, fun, and jolly comfortable. That electric motor's power is on tap from the very start. A good press on the accelerator will get you moving quicker than the 745 to Edinburgh. It only has a 0 to 60 time of 11.9 seconds, which doesn't sound very impressive. But trust me, this car feels a lot quicker than that sounds. Aside from its obviously silent power delivery, this car feels pretty conventional. Refinement is a major advantage of electric power, and other than a very slight hum from that motor under harsh acceleration, you won't hear a peep. This has caused a few problems for Nissan. You see, they've had to make quieter motors for the windscreen wipers, the door mirrors, and for the electric windows. You don't even hear a peep when you jet wash your windscreen. At every speed, the LEAF is a very, very quiet place to be. And of course, zero emissions means zero road tax. Despite the car's space-age dashboard, the rest of the cabin doesn't share that same techno-funk feel. Everything's pretty much where you'd expect to find it, and the controls are very well laid out and clearly marked. Even that very clever sat-nav system is a doddle to use. There's also a range of instrumentation to give you details on your economy, charging levels and local charging facilities. The Leaf is brilliant for passengers because there's enough leg and headroom in here for four decent sized adults to spread out in relative comfort. You can even fit five in at a bit of a squeeze. The Leaf's standard equipment list gives you pretty much everything you could possibly want. Keyless entry, air conditioning, Bluetooth connectivity and a reversing camera. There's also a brilliant satellite navigation system that incorporates dozens of other functions. You can communicate with the car using your smartphone and it will tell you how much charge is in the battery. You can even remotely fire up the air conditioning and warm up the car. Or perhaps just set a pre-programmed timer and that will do the same thing. Nissans these days have those clever sticky-up headlamps that help you to judge the width of the car in tight spaces. But the headlamps on the Leaf have been specifically designed to channel air away from the door mirrors. This is to reduce additional wind noise. This car is phenomenally quiet. You can hear every blade of grass that touches its sides on narrow country lanes. listen in to conversations of people standing at road junctions. It's brilliant! It is seriously cool in a weird environmentally friendly sort of way. This car develops the electrical equivalent of 108 brake horsepower, which places its performance in line with most small family cars. Mm -hmm. 
It has the largest motor of any of the current range of family EVs on the market and will keep up with traffic in pretty much any situation. Now, official figures state that this car has a top speed of about 90 miles per hour. But yesterday on our test track, I had this one up to over 100. A ton from a glorified milk float? Suffice to say, I was as baffled as a cow on AstroTurf. The Leaf is also cheaper than its nearest rivals, and it's better equipped. As you'd expect, it's always a trade with EVs, and you may find yourself having to choose between being warm or walking the last few miles home. As you would expect, it even talks, although you may wish that you hadn't discovered that after a while. The 29th of September, your energy economy was 0.31 kilowatt hours per mile. Based on the last five trips, your energy economy is good. You achieved a bronze rank for the regional energy economy ranking on the 30th of September. Thanks to all of the Nissan electric cars in the world. 1,390 tons of carbon dioxide did not pollute our air. Have you finished? Are you sure? It's very very, very clever, and it will certainly help to convince you that you are saving the planet. But it's like dating a member of Greenpeace. You can imagine how those long journeys must just fly by. Of course, new technology isn't without its problems. You can currently expect a maximum range of no more than 100 miles and recharging from a normal domestic power socket will take more than eight hours. With the least new untried technology, it's tricky to tell how dependable it will be too. Nissan's superb reliability record is comforting though and the electric drivetrain components have a five-year warranty, so things do look promising. The build quality is pretty solid too, even though some of the materials are a little on the basic side. And under the bonnet you will find, quite surprisingly, an engine. Or at least, a large electric motor with one moving part and no gearbox cunningly disguised as an engine. One odd downside is that although the Leaf comes with stability control, it doesn't have any form of low ratio gear. Consequently, tackling any ice covered downhill slope is likely to give you a few very stressful moments. Now this car is of course designed purely for city use, but its range does make it ideal for commuter belt travel, and that's where you're likely to find ungritted roads. The boot is surprisingly large, due to the absence of a spare wheel and of course a fuel tank. It's only one slight complication, the positioning of the battery compartment does create a large lip in the floor when you fold the back seats flat. It's a minor point, but it is a slight compromise on practicality. So, is the LEAF the way of the future? Well, quite possibly. The network of ecotricity fast charging points at motorway services is expanding, and charging it will of course cost you a fraction of what you'd pay for petrol. It's not cheap to buy yet, but the government will currently contribute £5,000 towards your purchase. So, in conclusion, when it comes to moving away from oil burners with the LEAF, Nissan certainly seems to be on the right track.